In this segment, we're going to look at the second half of the main solo section and focus on some more legato triplet exercises to tackle the bulk of this part of the song. To start with, let's play through this section just to see what we're dealing with. So the first few phrases of this section are almost exactly the same as the first half of this main solo section with much the same emphasis on vibrato and sliding in and out of phrases. The main difference here is that the melody ascends before resolving on this C note on the 5th fret on the 5th string. And it's also accompanied by a second lead guitar part that harmonises in 3rds and 4ths. So let's just have a, a more detailed listen to these phrases before we move on to the next section. Then we come to another legato triplet run that spans across four strings instead of two like the way the run at the end of the main theme does. So this one's an important run to get right, particularly in terms of the timing and making sure that you land on the first beat of the bar when the rhythm section fully opens up. Because if you miss this, you run the risk of throwing off the rest of the lead lines, uh, especially during a peak moment in the song like this. So let's take a closer listen to how this run sounds. <laughs> So if you're feeling the beat of the song as a crotchet pulse, like I suggested in the main theme segment, you want to start this run two beats before the backing track opens up into this riff. Now, because the two preceding bars are technically a bar of 7-8 then a bar of 9-8, we end up with a total of eight beats before the riff kicks in. So you have two options really. You can either think of this as two bars of 4-4 four, four, and then start the run on the beat 3 of the second bar, like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Or you can think of it as one bar of 8-4 or 8 crotchets and start the run on beat 7. Personally, I prefer to think of it as 8-4 as we're feeling most of the song in 7-4 so this just means adding on an extra beat so it makes it a little bit simpler. So going into this run you'd end up counting and feeling the, the section like this in a bit more context. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Play that one more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So then, to start breaking down the mechanics of this run, we're going to look at exercise 5 of the additional exercises folder, and specifically at line A and line B in that set of exercises. Now, you'll find that we'll be using the same techniques and principles as the previous legato triplet exercise, just basically over a wider range of strings. So we'll want to make sure that we're hammering on and pulling off uh, nice and evenly and that each hammer on and pull off results in a note that rings out nice and clearly. And we'll also want to pay close attention to the picking direction uh, in the tab as we'll be using consecutive downstrokes as we move up the scale and then consecutive upstrokes as we move down the scale. So let's have a play through exercises A and B. Uh, the first will be the quaver version and the second will be the semi-quaver version. <laughs>
Again, start off with a slow tempo for this exercise and make sure your notes are all sounding nice and smooth and even and that you're picking in the right way. You'll actually find this is a great exercise for building left hand strength and developing your legato technique. And also remember you can use the tempo as a way to measure and track your progress. So let's move on to the next part of the section which is a fairly fast flowing and melodic part and it touches on many of the techniques and ideas that we've seen so far, kind of like bringing them all together in a sort of summary and conclusion. Uh, for example, there's a lot more use of sliding in and out of phrases and plenty of hammer-ons and pull-offs to smooth out some of the lines. And one final big emphasis on this uh, semitone idea that we've seen a few times already. So let's have a play through this section uh, for a more detailed listen and see what we're dealing with. As we're dealing with a lot of ground we've already covered in other sections, there's no specific uh, exercises or techniques to look at to help learn this part, other than basically starting nice and slow and just following the tab and applying the same techniques and principles that we've already looked at. And also don't forget to keep an eye out for uh, the pick and directions as well. Now, the last part of this section of the solo brings us back to more legato triplets but this time with a bit of a difference in that we're combining scale runs and single string licks. In addition, we'll also be doing the vast majority of the work with our left hand, so prepare to get a pretty good left hand workout. Uh, to start with, let's recap this part and, and then go from there. <laughs> So listening to all that, as well as looking at the tab, you'll realize that we're dealing with a pretty large string of notes here. And like I've said before, the best way to deal with something like this is to break it down into chunks. So we're gonna split this part into three chunks. The first of which will be the ascending, then descending scale run that sounds like this. So for this chunk, you want to just keep repeating the phrase over and over again, nice and slowly at first, until it embeds itself into muscle memory, and then start building up speed. Also, make sure you're following the picking directions uh, using consecutive downstrokes across the third and second string. Then skipping the first string and coming back on yourself with consecutive upstrokes across the first and second string. So all together. I found this is basically the most efficient way to navigate this run of notes with the right hand. And some of you with a keen eye might have noticed that this chunk doesn't actually complete the last set of semiquaver triplets and stops one note short of the full set. So if you have a listen. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Three, one, two. Triple a triple a triple a triple a triple. So we're missing a note there. And now the reason for this is actually because the lick that makes up the second chunk starts on uh, the third note of the last group of triplets. So this note here on the ninth fret. So we, it's almost like a, a pickup note basically that starts before the, um, the next bar but is part of the next phrase. So the second uh, chunk ends up sounding like this. And again with this chunk keep repeating it until you've converted it into muscle memory and also at this stage, you might wanna start trying to combine the first two chunks together to begin the process of converting the whole thing into muscle memory, not just individual chunks. So that would be like this. In 
in addition, you can also look at lines C and D in exercise five of your additional exercises folder. These uh, exercises, they take the main body of this lick and turn it into a left hand exercise to help you build up strength and speed. Uh, starting first with quavers and then moving to semi quavers. So let's have a listen to how, how they sound. Now, a good variation on this exercise that you might also find helpful with building up speed um, is to actually build up speed whilst playing the exercise rather than going from quavers to uh, semi-quavers so you gradually build up like this. And you can also try playing the pickup note on the ninth fret uh, to lead into the exercise, uh, just to make it feel a little bit closer to the actual lick in the song, like this. So then we come to chunk three, which sounds like this. Now in this lick, you want to pay attention to the fact that we start it on the same note that we finished the last chunk, except we pick this note where we only hammered on to the last note. Now this may give uh, some the tendency to think or, or even feel that you've already played this note and then move on to the rest of the lick, but be careful to avoid this because it will mean that you throw the whole thing off by one semi-quaver triplet, which is gonna be pretty difficult to come back from. And as with the others, work slowly to get this chunk into muscle memory and then start combining it with the previous chunks. And we've also got the last two lines of exercise five, uh, lines E and F, that also take the main body of this lick and create an exercise from it. Now you'll find that these two exercises are a little bit better at building strength, uh, but they may take a bit longer to get up to speed as we're working the kind of weak combination of our uh, third and fourth finger. So let's have a listen to these two exercises now. So like I said, these two might take uh, a bit longer to get down, but persevere and you'll actually really reap the benefits of improved left hand strength and uh, little finger dexterity. So then once you combine all three chunks together, you should end up with this. So now let's move on to the last segment of these tutorials where we'll look at the outro solo section. <laughs> 